Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be talking about one of the most important nerves of the body, and that is the sciatic nerve. And it's not only one of the most important, but the sciatic nerve is very, very large. It's a very thick nerve. And so when you're looking at this on a cadaver or just an image, um, one of the dead giveaways that you've got the sciatic nerve is that, first of all, you're in the leg or gluteal region, and then you've got this really big, thick nerve. Right? So we got to talk about it, what it does. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about how it originates um, from these spinal nerve roots, and then we're going to go into basically how it branches, and then talk about a couple conditions that can be caused by irritation of the sciatic nerve. So the sciatic nerve is going to originate from spinal nerve roots L4 to S3, and you can see those highlighted in green. Now the sciatic nerve gets so much contribution from these nerves that it ends up being very large, as in very thick. And it actually has two portions. It has a fibular portion and it has a tibial portion. Okay? Um, these two parts will eventually become the tibial nerve. Okay? So tibial portion becomes tibial nerve. And then the fibular portion becomes the common fibular nerve, um, sometimes called common peroneal nerve. Fibular and peroneal are synonymous. They mean exactly the same thing, and they're used interchangeably. And as soon as the sciatic nerve is formed by the fusion of all of these nerve roots, it's going to be encased in a bundle of connective tissue called the sciatic sheath. The sciatic sheath protects the sciatic nerve, but it also um, helps keep these two portions together. Okay? And the sciatic nerve will be contained in that sciatic sheath all the way through the gluteal region, through the thigh. But once it gets to the popliteal fossa, uh, the sciatic sheath is going to terminate, and both these portions are going to diverge as separate nerves. That is the tibial nerve and the common fibular nerve. All right, And we'll look at a picture of that in just a minute. I just want to mention one thing that we're going to come back to at the end of this video, that if you have compression of any part of this, so compression of the sciatic nerve as a whole or of these roots, it can lead to a condition called sciatica, which is initially normally characterized by really bad lower back pain, and, the, and it can radiate into other areas distally from that. We'll come back to that at the very end of this video. All right, so of course the sciatic nerve is made from the roots of L4 down through S3, and you can see here, that's what this thing is supposed to be, it's the sciatic sheath. And so the sciatic nerve is going to run downward, and it's going to move through the gluteal region. Now here's a muscle that if you've spent any amount of time in a physical therapy clinic, you've probably heard of. It's called the piriformis muscle. Now the piriformis muscle functionally is a lateral rotator of the thigh, but it's also important as a landmark for the sciatic nerve because the sciatic nerve is going to it's going to be initially in the pelvic cavity because it's originating from those spinal nerve roots but it's going to basically exit the pelvic cavity through the greater sciatic foramen and then it's going to pass underneath the piriformis muscle and in about 87 roughly 87 percent of people it's actually going to run underneath the piriformis and so the piriformis can be an important landmark in identifying the sciatic nerve so again the sciatic nerve will still be contained in a sciatic sheath but notice that the the nerve itself is actually passing underneath this piriformis muscle as it moves through the gluteal region and the posterior thigh. Okay, So here's our sciatic nerve. It's going underneath the piriformis through the gluteal region and as it goes into the thigh, the posterior thigh, it still remains the sciatic nerve. It hasn't branched into its two components, the tibial in green and the common fibular here in blue. So it's going to be descending through the gluteal region and the posterior thigh. And as it's doing so, it is going to make some branches. Okay, We'll talk about this in a few minutes, but note that there are branches that come off that supply muscles in the posterior thigh. But again, the two major parts here do not separate yet. It's only once this nerve reaches the superior angle of the popliteal fossa that it actually separates into its component parts. So what is the popliteal fossa? Well, we're going to look at this in more detail in another video. But the popliteal fossa is sort of a space on the posterior side of the knee. So not on the kneecap side, on the back side. So this right here, the thing looks like a kite. This right here is the popliteal fossa. And this right here is the superior angle. It's formed where the biceps femoris, one of the hamstrings, meets the medial hamstring muscle, the semimembranosus. And so right when it gets to this angle, that's about where it diverges 
into the two component parts. So again, at that superior angle, the sciatic sheath terminates, and notice that these two nerves are going to separate. So we'll have a separate tibial nerve and a separate common peroneal nerve or common fibular nerve. Okay? So again, after exiting the greater sciatic foramen, go under the piriformis and really stay in that sciatic sheath and the two parts bound together the entire way until it gets to that popliteal fossa. But it does branch along the way. Now, to take a look at some of those branches, uh, again, before this thing actually diverges at the popliteal fossa, we can see that the tibial part, which is here in green, actually is going to serve most of the hamstring muscles. Okay? In fact, the semitendinosus, semimembranosus, long head of the biceps femoris, and actually the hamstring part of the adductor magnus, uh, these four muscles are going to be innervated by branches of the tibial part of the sciatic nerve. Um, the only one of the hamstring muscles that has any significant contribution from the common peroneal nerve is going to be the short head of the biceps femoris. But the point here is that we're going to have some branches here before uh, the sciatic nerve bifurcates, um, and most of those are going to come from the tibial portion. Right? But right here, where you see the bifurcation, where these two component parts are going to separate, this would be about where the popliteal fossa would be. So again, let's pick up there. So we've got the tibial nerve, and then we have the common peroneal or common fibular nerve. And these two nerves are what we're going to see in the leg. Now the tibial nerve and common fibular nerve, these will divide further. Uh, but we're just focusing on the sciatic nerve right here. But understand, that these will go down the leg uh, adjacent to the tibia and the fibula and serve the structures in the leg and ultimately the foot. All right? Now let's talk about some conditions of the sciatic nerve. And the first one we'll talk about is sciatica. Very painful. This is where you have compression of the sciatic nerve, but it's specifically the nerve roots. Okay? So notice here we have a compressed nerve root. Now remember, the sciatic nerve originates from spinal nerve roots L4 to S3, so it could be any one of those. But the tendency is when one of, or more of these roots are compressed, it causes pain in this region, and it's referred to as sciatica. And the pain really is usually going to be in the lower back, but it will eventually, or it can, radiate downward into the gluteal regions, the thighs, and even the legs, Okay, just from one compressed nerve root here. Now let's figure out which nerve root this is. Okay, so what is this right here, this, where there's this one in the middle? Well, that's the phylum terminale. So this would actually be the coccygeal nerve. This would be S5. S4, S3, S2. This would actually be the S1 nerve root that's compressed. This is S1, right? And so S1 is definitely within the range here of the sciatic nerve. So this would produce sciatica. But it could be any one of these. It could be L4, L5, S1, all the way through S3. And just compressing this one nerve root can cause pain in the region supplied by the sciatic nerve. Again, lower back, but it can radiate into the gluteal region and all the way down into the legs. And one of the things that can cause this nerve root is if you have excessive rotation of the back, you know, a quick rotation, you can herniate a disc. And so if a disc herniates in the right way, um, that disc bulges out and then that can compress this nerve root. Now the interesting thing about these intervertebral discs is they actually can heal themselves. They don't necessarily require surgery to correct. Uh, with proper treatment, physical therapy, exercise, you can actually heal those intervertebral discs and then you can relieve the compression, um, although a herniated disc is not the only thing that can compress this nerve root. Um, so in terms of the treatment that's typical for sciatica, yeah, of course you can use drugs, but I would say that's not really recommended um, because those won't really fix the problem. So of course the most logical solution is going to be physical therapy or physiotherapy. Right? Um, exercise is medicine in order to heal whatever the problem is that's compressing this nerve root and that will get rid of the sciatic nerve pain. Now sciatica specifically is when you have compression of these nerve roots and that causes the pain. But what happens if you compress the sciatic nerve somewhere down here? Not at the roots, but once the roots have already fused into the sciatic nerve. Well that wouldn't be sciatica, that would be something else entirely. But one thing that can cause that is something called piriformis syndrome. So recall 
I mentioned once the sciatic nerve exits through the greater sciatic foramen, it passes underneath the piriformis in about 87.5% of people. Okay? Well, what happens if this piriformis muscle spasms or it becomes tight? Okay? That could potentially put compression on the sciatic nerve because it runs directly behind it. Okay? And that could be a problem, and that would be something termed piriformis syndrome. Piriformis syndrome is something that you'll see in an orthopedic outpatient physical therapy clinic a lot. And so notice the sciatic nerve right here is traversing between this bone of the pelvis and the piriformis muscle. It's really tight in there. And if you compress this nerve, you're going to get pain, numbness, tingling in the buttocks area. And just like in the case of sciatica, uh, for piriformis syndrome, if you compress the sciatic nerve, that pain can radiate and, and move down into the, into the thighs and the legs and even into the foot, again, similar to what we see in sciatica. And again, one of the common treatments for piriformis syndrome, when you have a tight piriformis, is physical therapy. And so if you actually go shadow in an outpatient orthopedic physical therapy clinic, you'll actually see quite a few people in there uh, who have tight piriformis muscles. And that would actually be piriformis syndrome. And so what the person is going to do is they're actually going to do exercises to help relax the piriformis muscle so that it doesn't compress the sciatic nerve. And this can also be a problem in some people, about 12.5% of people, where the sciatic nerve, instead of running underneath the piriformis, actually goes through the muscle itself. So instead of running under it, actually there's a hole in the piriformis muscle, so to speak, a hiatus, and the sciatic nerve actually runs through that hiatus. And so you can imagine in that case too, if the muscle is spasming or tight, it will also compress the sciatic nerve. Okay? Either way, you'll have pain that will radiate from the buttocks all the way down to the leg potentially, and that is piriformis syndrome. All right. So hopefully this video gave you some good information on the sciatic nerve, where it originates, how it branches, and how it moves down the thigh, and also what can happen if you have irritation or damage to it. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.